Elon Musk believes that with no further advancements in battery technology, the world can be transitioned to sustainable energy. People often ask me, uh, uh, is, is some breakthrough needed in, in battery technology for the world to transition to uh, sustainability? Uh, the answer is no. Uh, even if there was zero uh, technology breakthroughs, so literally zero, uh, from where the technology is right now, we could fully transition Earth to sustainable energy. Batteries are critical to two of the three major pillars of Tesla's strategy to scale sustainable energy products. Vehicles such as the Model 3 or the Model Y house large batteries that ideally are powered by renewable forms of energy such as solar power. Tesla is building both of these elements at their Gigafactories, with the Buffalo Gigafactory 2 being responsible for solar products. However, the third piece of the puzzle is stationary battery storage systems that can help balance the grid and store the energy from intermittent sources such as wind and solar for later use. And so according to Elon Musk and Tesla, the world needs an insane 300 terawatt hours to become fully sustainable. But today the combined total of all of the world's companies producing batteries for such applications is nowhere near this amount. Tesla alone has taken the gargantuan task of trying to make a dent in this number by preparing to increase their battery output to an astounding 3 terawatt hours by 2030, which is still 8 years away if everything goes to plan. Of course, Tesla has also asked their suppliers to produce as many batteries as they possibly can, and the company is willing to buy these batteries in order to build more electric vehicles and storage systems. But one of Tesla's longest standing partnerships that's over a decade old is with Panasonic. Tesla originally developed the 2170 battery cell technology jointly with Panasonic, who's been leading the manufacturing lines at Giga Nevada, which has been a large investment not just for Tesla but for Panasonic as well over the years. Panasonic has invested billions alongside Tesla and has held exclusive deals with the company where, for instance, every Model 3 produced in the United States must run on Panasonic cells. Panasonic has since expanded its battery sales to other customers. However, at the same time, Tesla is able to purchase batteries from other suppliers for its other vehicles and is working on bringing its in-house batteries into its cars, which we're already starting to see with new Model Ys coming from Giga Texas that use 4680 battery cells. Now, one of the main bottlenecks for production of these lithium ion batteries is the lithium itself. Elon Musk believes that the majority of electric vehicles and stationary batteries, such as those in Tesla's Megapack and Powerwall, will run on lithium iron phosphate batteries. Iron is extremely abundant on Earth and lithium is abundant as well. Tesla did outline plans for mining its own lithium during its Battery Day event, but Elon Musk is hesitant to enter the mining business. He actually thinks that mining of the raw lithium, while difficult, is not the real challenge for sourcing materials for lithium iron batteries, but rather refining the lithium is the difficult part and building the machinery to do so. Albeit lithium prices themselves have skyrocketed due to supply constraints, and so increased mining of the element is required for the industry. Uh, the, the issue is very much the rate at which the entire supply chain from mining to refining to, to, to cell production how fast can that grow? It's growing fast, but the faster it grows, the faster we transition to a sustainable energy economy. However, both the mining and the refining will remain a problem for many years to come, so much so that Elon Musk has even encouraged people to move their careers into this industry, which he says has software-like margins. And thus, talented engineers are needed at all segments of the supply chain, even for the battery industry. Now you can also improve your own skills with the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions of people come together to take the next step in their creative journey. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people, including graphic design, animation, web development, and video editing. One of the first classes that caught my attention was YouTube Success Script, Shoot, and Edit with MKBHD. Now this is taught by popular tech YouTuber Marquez Brown Lee, and as a fan of his content, I was very interested in his class, which shows a behind the scenes overview of how he creates his inspirational videos by bringing together his love of technology and photography and combining it with authentic writing. Now Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, 
meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. Whether you're a dabbler or a pro or a hobbyist, discover what you can make with classes for every skill level. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description or use coupon code TMIOTESLA0522 will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Now, although Panasonic has been partnered with Tesla for many years, and one would think that they would be the leader in batteries having this head start and being pushed relentlessly by Tesla to constantly improve and boost production, it turns out that other players in the industry have grown much faster than Panasonic to take market share away from the company. Companies like LG, CATL, and even BYD in China have stepped up their game to surpass Panasonic, which used to be the leader. In 2021, Panasonic held near 10% of EV battery supply, but this is down from 2019, just two years earlier, when they held closer to 30% of the market. Tesla, of course, has partnered with all of these major suppliers and will buy batteries from anyone that makes sales to their needed specifications. Now, this doesn't mean that Panasonic can't catch up just as its competitors leapfrog them. Panasonic has game-changing plans to bring new types of batteries into the marketplace. According to Reuters, Panasonic is working on new technology in order to increase battery energy density by 20% by the year 2030. This could boost the range of Tesla's Model Y by 62 miles according to the article, or allow for a lighter vehicle by putting in fewer batteries to get the same amount of range, thus saving dramatically on the cost per vehicle and allowing these batteries to go into more cars. Panasonic has also developed a way to slow down degradation at higher voltages with a new mix of additives to the electrolyte. The current battery cell for Tesla uses 4.2 volts, but Panasonic's executive vice president says that if we can get to 4.5 or 4.6 volts, I think the whole world view in terms of what's possible for EVs would change. Furthermore, by 2024, Panasonic intends to produce the larger 4680 battery cells which were introduced by Tesla at Battery Day and the company has reportedly sent samples of its 4680 cells to Tesla last month. Reuters states that it's not clear as to whether Panasonic's plans for improved battery chemistry will make its way into these 4680 cells or the 2170 cells or both. But taking these steps and following Tesla's lead could drastically speed up Panasonic's production in terms of gigawatt hours produced for the EV and battery storage markets. Just over a week ago, the governor of Kansas announced that Panasonic Energy plans to build an electric vehicle battery facility in the state, which amounts to a $4 billion investment, the largest private investment in the state's history. This is certainly a show of confidence that Panasonic is serious about its long-term battery production capabilities, especially in the United States. This is interesting to see because just over a year ago, the outgoing CEO of Panasonic stated that the company needed to reduce its reliance on Tesla. This was a little strange at the time, since although anyone can use Panasonic's batteries for their vehicles, Tesla is a prime customer with an insatiable demand for more batteries for many years to come. It seems like Panasonic would want to be taking advantage of this opportunity and distancing themselves from Tesla could be the reason why they've let other competitors surpass them. But as it turns out, it appears that now in 2022, they are in fact continuing to build closer relations with Tesla, which is also helping the company boost its own capabilities for the long term and will be a win-win for both Tesla and Panasonic. Now Tesla is pushing strongly for the 4680 battery cells which it will use as part of the structural battery pack starting with the Model Y coming from Giga Texas. This means that the outer casing of the battery needs to be thicker and stronger in order to provide more rigidity for the vehicle and we've seen this thanks to the teardown by the limiting factor. Elon Musk compares this to putting fuel in the wings of the plane which gives dual uses for the same component. In the same way the 4680 pack would provide both structure and energy. Panasonic's 4680 cells would likely follow Tesla specifications as well, though in applications where such structure isn't needed, weight and cost could be removed by potentially using a thinner material for the outer casing. Now Tesla has seen explosive growth at its pilot factory on Cato Road in California, which produces the 4680 battery cells. Production has been growing at an astounding 35% per month 
since March of this year. The Model Y vehicles that have come out of Giga Texas with 4680s are being supplied from this Cato Road facility. That said, Giga Texas now has its own 4680 manufacturing machinery installed and surprisingly intends to surpass Cato Road production by the end of this year, according to what Tesla has said on the most recent conference call. This is presumably while Cato Road is continuing to grow at around 35% per month, so they must have much higher capacity installed at Giga Texas so far versus the Cato Road pilot facility. Tesla has taken its learnings from its pilot facility and unlocked further manufacturing simplicity and higher performance. They've also insourced additional content at the new factory. But because this is a lot of new technology going into the 4680 production lines, Tesla is also hedging its bets at Giga Texas with installed capacity for a non-structural pack and 2170 battery cells. But by next year, it's imperative that the company have 4680 capacity ramped up in order to meet Tesla's demand. And so the company is in no way giving up on 4680s just because they will also be producing 2170 cell-based vehicles as well. Tesla states that its 4680 battery cell yields at Cato Road are high and are on target on many areas while trending towards the target in other areas. But really, the purpose of the 4680 cell isn't to achieve an insane level of battery energy density, although it will improve on this, but rather to scale as fast as possible. As Elon Musk said, even today's technology can transition the world to sustainable energy, just scale is needed. Of course, with higher energy density batteries, scale increases much more quickly since each car would need fewer batteries. At the same time, Tesla doesn't want to displace their suppliers. They actually want their entire supply chain to grow with them as fast as possible. Drew Baglino, Tesla's Senior Vice President of Powertrain and Energy Engineering, said, Like, it, it really is, how do we scale as fast as possible? And, you know, we're taking these risks that we've discussed uh, at Battery Day, and our plan is, a, a, as we de-risk them and they are successful, we want to bring them back to our partners so that they can go faster too, because that's all on the mission. And so Tesla plans to solve many of the unknowns and issues that they run into in scaling up this new technology, but then to share this with their partners in order to help transition the world to sustainable energy as quickly as possible. So do you think that Tesla will sell equipment to other suppliers or get first dibs on new battery production in exchange for sharing their technology? Or will they give it away for free? And how long do you think it will take before most of Tesla's battery supply comes from the new 4680 cells? Don't forget to check out our Skillshare sponsor link in the description below. Please hit the like button and subscribe. We would really appreciate that. And a huge shout out to all of our patrons that helped us support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.